My name is Jimmy Miracle. Welcome to my studio here in Iowa City, United States. And I am a artist and instructor. I've taught at universities. I've studied in New York with a few painters named Brandon Soloff, Dan Thompson, Michael Grimaldi, and I went to grad school out in California studying painting, installation, art, and I want to introduce you to the concept of memory drawing, memory training, and how you can improve your visualization techniques, how you can better use your imagination and see things in your head with your eyes closed, imagining colors, forms, shapes, entire uh, artistic works completed in your head. Memory training is great for that. You can work on it and learn it. Whistler's work right here. This is a nocturne painted by great 19th century painter James McNeil Whistler. He painted this largely from memory. He was standing on the shores of England at night with no camera, staring for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, trying to soak in the essence of the scene. The next morning he would wake up in his studio and if he could close his eyes and see the painting completed, see the nocturne in his head, he would begin. If not, he would wait another day. He would wait for nighttime. He would go back and stand on the shores, see if he could imagine and see this in his head, visualizing it from uh, memory the next morning. Let me introduce you to the painter that I was introduced to in my mid-twenties. This is the instructor Horace Lecole de Beaux Badron from the Ecole de Beaux Arts. He was a prominent uh, painter as well as a sculpting instructor. He taught Rodin, Fantine Latour, Alphonse Legros. So he's known for this book, main, major book, Training of the Memory in, in Art and the Education of the Artist. He goes over a series of progressive exercises. He would send students to the Louvre to study Michelangelo. They would copy a Bouguereau or a Holbein, but not bring a sketchbook as they went there. They would go to the Louvre, spend a few hours studying the composition, seeing like Whistler, if they could close their eyes and see it in their head, deconstructing its line, its tone, its color. Then they would go back to this man's studio the next day and he would ask them reproduce this drawing of that painting for me from memory no reference and they would be able to do it you could go check this book out it's pretty amazing the human mind has a great ability to recall and memorize visual information almost developing a better than photographic memory, an intelligent memory where you can select and recall the important information. Another book I would like you to check out This could be useful, Drawing from Memory, The Cave Method for Learning to Draw from Memory. This is another great one. She would do something similar where she would give you, say, this barred drawing and say, hey, copy this from life, sight size, and then before you do that, actually, she would give you some tracing paper and or glass. You would trace the silhouette perfectly, and that way you would have a perfect reference to place on top of your drawing and see the errors. Once you're accurately able to perfectly represent this from observation, she would take the reference away. Like, boom, that's gone. Okay, no more reference draw that from memory for me. And if you couldn't, you'd go back, draw it again from life. If you couldn't do it again, do it one more time. After two or three times, she'd have you hopefully be able to draw it from memory at that point. But anyways, it's a training method that can help you with your visualization techniques and this guy here, Darren Rooster, he has a website called Memory Drawing and a few books that I've checked out can be useful for getting you started over the hump with some of these beginning training. Let me show you a little bit about how this work is used throughout art history. Bouguereau, obviously these nymphs and satyrs aren't posing for him and just sitting there in his studio with this grand composition. He's using constructive imagination methods of creating things that he sees in his head. 
the memory work comes in in that it trains the visualization aspect of your brain. He is working from drawings and reference and then recreating this entire scene, memorizing, He's, I mean, he's memorized how nature works in the way that light falls on like a human form, all the anatomy. He's memorized these things so that he can reconstruct this from his head. Innes, obviously this scene did not stay put for him for longer than five, ten minutes. He is memorizing the essential notes of this composition and then poetically stating them again in his studio, uh, poetically uh, talking about them in his personal way, memorizing what he wanted and selecting uh, intelligent information that he edited out. There's a Whistler, Luca Cambiasso, an imaginative, imaginative, imaginative constructive drawing of uh, the crucifixion uh, and the or the deposition of Christ. Obviously, all these figures are not standing there for him. He is recreating a feeling and a s sensation from his imagination using constructive drawing techniques and. His memory work is aiding his visualization. Michelangelo, need I say more? Study him. In Caravaggio, this man is not sitting like this with blood coming out of his neck. The entire painting and posing for Caravaggio. He is reconstructing this from his head, from drawings, from imagination. And his memory work is aiding his visual recall of the scene that he saw in his head when he was dreaming. Um, uh, let's see here. I'm getting a little bit confused. All right, so let me give you something practical to work on. So here is a bard drawing. You could draw this from life when you can get all the drawing perfectly accurate from life observation, then good for you. I've seen students spend 20, 30, 40 hours just to get this perfectly, and then they can't spend five seconds from memory drawing anything because they never tried to visually recall what they're doing. I think that's pretty poor practice. I would like you to start practicing your memory work no matter what level you're at. So you can start just getting into the habit of saying, okay, my drawing's not done until I can do it from memory. First thing you can work on is just basic proportion. What's the height to width ratio? Can you even draw that from memory? This one's about two and a half to one overall. That would be something simple. Can you draw a two and a half by one square from memory? Did you even take the time to analyze that that's what this was? Can you see it in your head? Can you see some of these main tilts? Basic things, this left, that drops right, that drops left, this uh, anchors the column of uh, this column like leg, anchors the entire figure. Did you memorize simple stuff like that of the gesture? Did you memorize a simple S curve? Some of these key anatomical landmarks from the pit of the neck to the medial malleolus. Uh, anatomical intelligence, using selection to memorize important key information. Uh, here is a very simplified, almost Disney animator-like cartoon block-in of the big primitive forms, but it gets the overall gesture. Can you even do that from memory, from reconstruction with no reference? Egg, egg, cylinder, joints as little tiny balls, this one coming this way, this one uh, being that column slightly higher than the one on the left. Simple things like that will aid you to be able to work on your memory training intelligently, not just copying things. The overall envelope. The big silhouette reduced to a simple number of lines that encompasses the overall shape. Can you draw that shape accurately from memory? I got a little bit of a extra up there, but can you draw this shape accurately from memory? Finally, the big block in. It's chiseling in the overall abstraction of the envelope, but getting a little bit more specific. If you can get to this level, I think you're doing really good. By that level, I mean drawing that from memory. And then you can use 
lots of years of anatomical study and reconstruction of primitive forms to build in the details so you're not just copying note for note and uh, I will leave you there practice your memory work and um, you will definitely improve your visualization technique and I hope this video helps you and have a great day